Here's a review on Hydrofarm's new improved Emily's Garden. This box comes packed with everything you need except for plants and water. There's plenty of growing media for the six large one gallon grow pots as well as rock wool starter cubes for germinating seeds or rooting cuttings. Hydroton, which is a clay aggregate, is the growing medium supplied with the system. The newer Growstone product is made in the USA from recycled glass. Growstones come in two sizes, medium for hydroponic applications and a smaller size as an additive to soil to increase aeration and water retention. Assembly of this tabletop deep water culture system is very easy. First install the one half inch rubber grommet and the dual purpose site and drain tube. Place the top on the nutrient reservoir temporarily and install the inspection cap. Then remove the top to install the air stone assembly. The air supply hose is pre-assembled so all you have to do is install the air stones and the air pump. The nutrient reservoir design provides a cavity to hold the air pump. This design proves to be beneficial especially in cool areas because the pump dissipates its mild heat into the nutrient solution. As shown the air pump and air stone configuration provides plenty of aeration to the nutrient solution to help stimulate root and plant growth. The grow pots will be placed in this manner but first we need to get the growing media ready to use. It's very important to follow directions on both of these products. Both growing medias must be rinsed thoroughly to remove dust and any other small particles that could interfere with system operation. As you can see, there's plenty of debris to be blown off these rocks. Rinse the grow stones in the same manner as the hydrogen. As mentioned previously, read all the directions well to make sure all conditions are met to achieve optimum growth. So now with our growth media prepared and system ready to go, we can transplant our rooted cuttings into Emily's grow pots. There's a few ways to do this, but I generally, very carefully, toss a few handfuls of medium uh, to the bottom of the pot around the plant's roots. Then, being very careful not to damage the plant, take the large container and finish filling the grow pot. We cloned these cuttings a little longer so the roots would extend well into the grow pot. There are now six plants installed three in the hydrogen and three in the grow stone, all six in the brand new Emily's Garden. Just a few days later we can already see some pretty amazing growth. This top view shows that all six plants are bushing out very nicely. To make a sweet basil plant bushy, clip off the blossoms shortly after they appear. This process will also help keep the leaves tender. A good way to do this is to break the blossoms off while leaving a couple of side shoots to develop new leaves and branches. Grasp the stem just below the second node from the top of the bud to be removed. Simply bend the stem until it breaks then pinch it off very carefully. So now we have a bud to toss in the compost bin and a few delicious leaves to toss in the salad. This Genera plant is a very popular medicinal herb that we are going to trim for cuttings for root propagation. To choose a good cut location, consider the length of the cutting and how the plant may grow after making the cut. Also, when you make the cut, as with the basil plant, 
Be very careful not to damage any side shoots. Now let's see how this one-handed cutting operation goes. Well, that went well. We now have a long, very sturdy cutting and a genera plant that will provide many future leaves and cuttings. This method works for many types of plant cutting. First, trim off all the lower leaves. Again, being careful not to disturb the sprout area just above the leaf. Now we have a long, rather bare looking cutting, cut at an angle for better absorption, ready to put in the cloning machine. This small DWC cloner has two inch inserts which accept significant size cuttings, so it is great for use for this type of operation. Place the cutting in the insert to the desired depth. To prevent any damage, you can place the sprout in the V of the insert. Then just insert the insert. The new model of this uh, cloner has two inch indents in the top to more easily place the inserts. Now in a very short time, we will have a brand new plant, perhaps for the next Emily's garden crop. There are several different stages of clones here. This is the one we just placed. It's a good length to develop a decent amount of roots. To recap, this was the first planting. And this is about a week later. And here we have a very healthy edible product. Here's a bit more about nutrient solution tank access and nutrient management. We didn't use the inspection access for testing because it's very easy to remove a plant temporarily for testing and replenishment. In this case, we ran the pH between 6 and 6.5, the conductivity around 1200, which would put the TDS at around 600. Removing a plant container also made it a lot easier to make up water and to add nutrient. We did run the nutrient solution reservoir a little higher than the recommended mark. Okay, so what's so good about Emily's Garden? Well, it's simple and very inexpensive. You don't have to build it, and it's real easy to assemble. Also, it operates extremely well and can be easily set up for a very clean indoor operation. Well, there you go. You can see the results. And you sure wouldn't want to argue with an old farmer now, would you?